Hey everyone, welcome to the channel where we are discussing Terraform in detail. In our previous episodes, we have discussed all about the variables with Terraform. How do we declare and provide the values to the variables? What would be the precedence of variable if we provide with the different ways? Now from this episode onwards, we will discuss about the Terraform configurations. We'll get to know how do we set up the Terraform configuration to provision the infrastructure into the cloud? First of all, in this particular episode, we'll start with the Terraform configuration. As always, I'm going to use my Visual Studio code to have a demonstration. This is our eighth demonstration. So we'll be using this particular Terraform directory that is called the Terraform configuration where we have the main.tf and the variable.tf file. So first of all, what is Terraform configuration? So Terraform configuration is a block of code which helps you to provide some settings or some configuration. With that, you can pin your Terraform code to a specific version of Terraform as well as you can provide the definition of the cloud providers or the Terraform providers so that you can interact with the cloud environments. For example, if I would like to provision the resources into my Azure environment, then I need a Azure Terraform provider, which I need to configure in my Terraform configuration block. I'll show you in a moment. First of all, to set up the Terraform configuration, you need to use the Terraform keyword. As you can see, once I type T-E-R, I get a help from the HashiCorp extension. I'll press tab and this is a Terraform configuration block. In this configuration block, there are multiple attributes which you can define. So you can define the backend block, which can help you to store your Terraform state files onto a remote location, which we'll be looking into detail in our, our upcoming episode. For now, I'll not be using this backend configuration. Next, you have the cloud block. In case if you are using the Terraform Enterprise and you want to provision the resources with the help of Terraform Enterprise, then you can define this configuration as a cloud configuration on this block. And this block requires the host name, which is going to be HashiCorp. Then you need to have your organization name, uh, which you have set up in your Terraform Enterprise cloud. And then, of course, you need to have a token value which you can provide, which is an optional value. Again, we'll be having a dedicated episode on setting up the Terraform Enterprise Cloud or setting up a resources with the Terraform Enterprise Cloud. So I'll not be using this block for now. Next block you have in this Terraform configuration is the required version. Required version attribute generally used if you would like to pin your Terraform configuration to a specific version of Terraform. Let's say when I started developing my code in Terraform, at that point of time, the Terraform version was, let's say, 1.1.9. And then now, as we know that the Terraform has moved to 1.2.8, something like that, which is most upgraded version. But if you don't want to use the latest version due to some breaking changes, which might break your code, and if you want to stick to a older version of your Terraform, then what you can do is you can stick to that version or a specific version to your Terraform code using this attribute in the Terraform configuration. So required version, you can specify the required version as the version of the code which you want to use. Let's say, for example, here I'm saying that return on this particular version of the Terraform code. So now if I'm trying to run this code on any version which is lower than this or higher than this, then I'll get an error, right? Now you can define the version of the code as this, which is equals to this particular version, not less than or not greater than. Now let me run this code. I'll open the terminal by right clicking here on the Terraform configuration directory. I'll run the Terraform init command. As you can see that the initialization is completed, which is using the Terraform current version, which I have. If I just show you the Terraform version command. So this is the version right now I have. Now, if I try to stick to a version, let's say 1.2.8, which is the latest version, which is not installed on my system. But if I say that my 
Terraform code is developed on this version and I would like to pin that particular version which is the latest than what I have it on my system and, and now if I run the Terraform initialization command then possibly it will not work as because the current configuration which we have specified in our code versus the version of Terraform which I have on this workstation is not matching so it's failing because, because of that. Now the other version, uh, other way to define this or pin this particular version in Terraform is you can use this equals sign which means that the required version is going to be equals to 1.2.8 of course it's not going to work because I'm not using this version at the moment so I'll just use the older one. Now the next configuration we have is the important configuration which is about the providers which we need to mention here. So as I said, the providers block in Terraform is the important configuration. These are the enablers for your Terraform code to communicate to your cloud environment and it will help you to interact with the cloud APIs to provision your infrastructure. So the way Terraform provider works is you write the code in your Terraform configuration in your Terraform directory and when you run the Terraform commands on the console like Terraform initialization or plan or the apply command, then your Terraform code will interact to the Terraform providers which you have specified on the provider configuration. And these providers basically use the Terraform code and convert it into the target API compatible code and then it will interact to those APIs to provision the infrastructure and then it responds back as in the HashiCorp language format. This is why the Terraform provider block is very, very important and mandatory block to have in case if you would like to provision the resources in the cloud environment. Here to define the providers, you have to define the name of the provider, which is again a kind of a block and then the source. In case of I would like to specify the Azure provider, then I can give the name as an Azure RM, which could be anything, any name. I can also say Azure RM primary this is my Azure RM primary provider, let's say, in case if I would like to have multiple providers and then source as in HashiCorp and Azure RM. These providers which help us to provision the infrastructure at the remote location, these are generally maintained by the your cloud environment team as well as the HashiCorp team. So it is a joint venture of both the teams. These are the kind of provider which requires to interact with the remote APIs, I would like to call it as a remote provider. We can also have the local providers defined here in your Terraform configuration. I'll give you one example of the local provider. Let's say if I would like to generate a random password or random GUID or random string, then I can have HashiCorp random provider, which is a local provider. This usually do not go to or do not require to call any uh, remote APIs. Once you declare those providers as a required provider, you can use the provider resources or the instances. For example, if I need to create a random string now using this particular provider, I can do that by using the resource block or with the key random string, which is one of the, you can say one of the method or one of the identifiers available with this provider. Similarly, if I need to define the Azure resource, let's say resource group, then I can again use the resource group and then Azure RM, which is the name of my provider. And here I can say that resource group and then instance name I can give. We'll discuss about this resource block in details, but I will be able to use these blocks only if I have defined these providers. Now, similarly, I will be able to use this random string block, which is a method or a property of this particular provider. So in order to use any of these resources or data source block, you have to have the providers enabled. Again, with these providers, you can define a specific version if you want to with the equal sign or if you want to upgrade to a minor version, then you can upgrade to the minor version as well. I'll give you an example of the upgradation. So once I run the Terraform initialization command, what's happening here is Terraform initialization is first of all, checking for the backend block under my Terraform. So I don't have any backend block. 
next it is trying to find or search those providers which I have mentioned for example I have mentioned the Azure RM Hashikov forward slash Azure RM and Hashikov forward slash random so with this specific version which is version 2.3.0 and version 2.8.0 it's trying to find those matching version and then once it is fine it has downloaded or installed those version on this Terraform directory if you look at here now we have a new directory which is named as the dot terraform directory log file created and our terraform has been initialized successfully right if i simply open this log file first of all just to give you an idea we have the provider block in this particular log file so as we have two providers hashicorp azure rm and hashicorp random provider we got two provider blocks and one and which has the version which we have specified and the constraint we have specified so we are saying that this is our version constraint which we have mentioned and this is the current version which we are using why do we have these two property i'll show you in the demonstration now if we expand this dot terraform directory using three command you can see that we inside this dot terraform directory we have both the providers downloaded as in Azure RM with this version on the Windows 64 bit operating system. Similarly, the random provider with this version has been installed. As I said, as because we have specified the specific version to be used. Now, let's say if I would like to just upgrade the minor version of this particular provider. So as I know from the Terraform Azure RM provider, this 2.8 has a minor release so what i can do is i can use this tilde operator and then greater than sign to upgrade to the minor version similarly i would like to upgrade to the latest version of this random provider. So what i can do is i can use the greater and then equal sign so that it will download any version which is available beyond this so if I run the Terraform initialization now, you can also run the Terraform initialization with the upgrade command to upgrade the Terraform version. As you can see that this time it is trying to find the minor release on this 2.88.0 and latest release on this. So the minor release it has found as in 2.88.1 whereas the latest version for the random provider it has found 3.4.2. If I again open the log file, now the things are changed, the properties are changed. The version constraint is what we have specified in our configuration, whereas the latest version is the, this version which we are using right now. Similarly, the version constraint is this on Azure RM which we have specified, but the latest version is this version which we are using, right? Same again, if I just run the tree command just to see how my dot terraform directory looks like. As you can see that now we have got two Terraform provider version for the Azure RM, which is 1.88.0, 1. Oh, 2.88.0, 2.88.1. Similarly, for random, we have got 2.3.0 and then 3.4.2, which is the latest version. Right? So this is how you can use the Terraform provider block to configure your remote or local providers and you can configure multiple of them as and when you need these providers are maintained by the different teams it could be the teams of the terraform or azure your cloud environment or it could be you can write your own provider as well and register to the terraform uh, site as you can see that the azure rm provider currently using this particular version which has been published eight hours ago what does it mean that these providers are keep on upgrading with the different different changes so the team of the microsoft azure as well as the hashicorp is continuously working on these providers to enhance or to adopt the changes which which are required to support to provision your infrastructure so that's the reason it is really important that you pin up your Terraform configuration with the specified version in case if you would like to stick to an older version of the Terraform configuration. 
I hope you have found this useful to know about the Terraform required provider and Terraform configuration. Now in the next episode, we'll discuss about the providers in detail because for now we just left the provider block empty, but we'll discuss in detail what this provider block is and how do we configure that.